Bagha Jatin was an Indian independence activist. Jatin was born in Kayagram, a village in the Kushtia subdivision of Nadia district, which is now in Bangladesh. His parents were Umesh Chandra Mukherjee and Sharad Sashi. He grew up in his ancestral home at Janaidha until his father's death. His father died when Jatin was five years old. His mother settled in her parents' home in Kayagram. As Jatin grew older, he gained a reputation for physical bravery and great strength, charitable and cheerful by temperament, and he was also fond of acting, mythological plays and playing the roles of God-loving characters like Prahlad, Dhruv, Hanuman, Raja Harishchandra, and others. The name by which he came to be known, Bagha Jatin, derived from an incident in which he killed a tiger with nothing but a Darjeeling tiger. Bagha means tiger. Then, the then leading surgeon of Kolkata, Dr. Suresh Prasad Sarvadhikari, who operated upon Jatin, took upon himself the responsibility for curing the fatally wounded patient, coming twice to his house daily to dress his wounds personally. After passing the entrance examination in 1895, Jatin joined the Calcutta Central College, now Kudiram Bose College, for his first arts. Soon, he started visiting Swami Vivekananda, whose social thought and especially his vision of a politically independent India had a great influence on Jatin. As a man-making mission inspired by the monk, he raised a batch of volunteers to serve the miserable compatriots during famines, epidemics and floods. He also ran clubs in the context of a nation under foreign domination. He often joined Sister Nivedita, the Swami's Irish disciple, in this venture. In 1899, while working as the Barrister Kennedy's secretary at Muzaffarpur, Jatin realized how urgent it was to have an Indian National Army and to react against the British squandering Indian budget to safeguard their interests in China and elsewhere. Jatin, together with Barinda Ghosh, set up a bomb factory near Deoghar, while Barin was to do the same at Maniktala in Calcutta. Whereas Jatin disapproved of all untimely terrorist action, Barin led an organization centered around his own personality and his aim was, aside from the general production of terror, the elimination of certain Indian and British officers serving the crown. Duly appreciated for his professional competence, in 1907, Jatin was sent to Darjeeling on some special work for a period of over three years. From early youth, Jatin had the reputation of a local sando and he soon attracted attention in Darjeeling in cases in which he tried to measure the strength with Europeans. In 1908, he was leader of one of the several gangs that had sprung up in Darjeeling and whose objective was the spreading of dissatisfaction towards the British. Jatin, with, with his associates, started a branch of the Anushilan Samiti called the Bandhab Samiti. In April 1908, in Siliguri railway station, Jatin got involved in a fight with a group of English military officers headed by Captain Murphy and Lieutenant Somerville. On observing the gleeful animosity created by the news of a few Englishmen thrashed single-handed by an Indian, Wheeler advised the officers to withdraw the case. Warned by the magistrate to behave properly in the future, Jatin regretted that he would not refrain from killing anyone or taking similar action in self-defense or in the vindication of the rights of his countrymen. One day, in a pleasant mood, Wheeler asked Jatin, with how many can you fight alone? The prompt reply was not a single one, if it is a question of honest people, otherwise as many as you can imagine. In 1908, Jatin was not one of the over 30 revolutionaries accused in the Alipur bomb case following the incident at Muzaffarpur. Hence, during the Ali Alipur trial, Jatin took over the leadership of the secret society to be known as the Jugantar Party. He visited his guru, Bholandar Giri, and after that, he reorganized the Jugantar party. Jatin's revolutionary activities 
affected the British government and the government forces were keen on arresting Jatin and announced a reward for Jatin's capture. Jatin and his companions walked through the forests and hills of Mayurbhanj in marshland and torrential rain and after two days reached Balasur. The government forces approached them in a pincer's movement. Jatin finally took up position on 9 September 1915 in an improvised trench in undergrowth of Balasur. His companions asked Jatin to leave and go to safety. Jatin refused to leave them. A gunfight ensued, lasting 75 minutes, between the five revolutionaries armed with Mosser pistols and a large number of police and army armed with modern rifles. It ended with an unrecorded number of casualties on the government side. On the revolutionary side, Chitrapriya Rai Chaudhary died. Jatin and Jatish were seriously wounded and Manurandan Sen Gupta and Niren were captured after their ammunition ran out. Jatin died in Balasur Hospital on 10 September 1915. The leading fight of the revolutionaries ignited the national spirit in the young generations in greater measure. Informed about his death, M. N. Roy wrote, I could not forget the injunction of the only man I ever obeyed almost blindly. Jatin Das' heroic death must be avenged. Only a year had passed since then, but in the meantime, I had come to realize that I admired Jatin Da because he personified, perhaps without himself knowing it, the best of mankind. Baga Jatin helped a lot in the Indian national movement and without him, there would be a great difference in today's India.